everyone. Thank you so much for joining me for today's episode of Crafting with Class. Today, I'm so excited to share a project using the Anna Griffin Luxury Purse Card Dies. But these are not cards. These are luggage-inspired mini albums. So let's get started. As I mentioned, we're going to be using the Anna Griffin Luxury Quilted Purse Card Dies. When I hauled it and I saw this, it totally i totally thought this could be luggage it looks like my luggage so that's where the inspiration came from so when you purchase this you know you get all the instructions you get all the parts and pieces to make the card or in this case also a box and so it's very versatile that way but today we're going to be making luggage <laughs> so here are the pieces for the project if you want to make it along with me. So you'll need one of these, this piece right here that we're going to be using to back it. Normally, this is what you would use to create the box. Um, I'm going to be also be using, I'm not going to use the inside, but I'll show you how I did use it before. So I cut out four panels, two that I embossed and then two that are going to make up the covers of the album. And then I cut out two pattern papers to kind of be the inside liners. And then I die cut the, what I'm gonna use as the handle as well. And I cut two out, uh, two of the shadow and then two of the decorative layer. So they'll go like that so that they're finished on both sides. And also a bunch of the bottoms of the little luggage things, just the bottoms that we're going to use as wheels. So starting off, I am using 12 by 12 paper. Um, this is like 65 pound and this is going to make up the hinge. You want to cut them into four inches. You can either use one or two, depending on how thick you want this album. Um, I definitely recommend lightweight paper for this because it needs to be flexible. So on my scoring board, I'm taking one of those four inch um, panels and I'm scoring half an inch all the way across. So with the scoring board, it's super easy. But if you don't happen to have one, just go ahead and do that on your paper trimmer. So I'm going fast here. So it's just half an inch all the way across. All right, so there you have it. So do that to both of them if you're gonna make a thicker album or just one if you're gonna make a thinner album. I'm gonna make two. All right, so next we are going to go ahead and fan fold. So it's very important for this project because those this is gonna create kind of the hinge mechanism where you're gonna attach all your photos and it's gonna to attach to the album. So I always really love to make sure that everything is burnished and creased really well. So what you wanna do is just kind of the back and forth, just the way you would do like a fan fold or an accordion fold this way. So I like to forward for, fold it forward uh, burnish it, fold it backwards, burnish it. So you're going to do that all the way across. Okay, so just like that. And I've sped it up just because, you know, this is a repetitive thing. So there you go. You're going to do it all the way across. So I've done it. And so now I'm going to gather up all my uh, mountains and valleys. <laughs> so there you see the little fan. And just to make sure everything's good. And you want to make sure that you do this on both sides, just so that it's pl very pliable. So here you can see how uh, when you fold it, right, they, it's going to be very pliable that they completely find each other without hardly any effort. All right, so you're going to fold it back and forth. You're going to leave the last two unfolded. So you're going to basically have a one inch piece on either end. Okay, so you're going to, or sorry, one, yeah, a one inch piece on either end. So you're going to have one inch piece here and a one inch piece there. So the middle is going to be your mechanism to hold your photos. So you're going to do the same thing for your second piece if you're going to make like a thicker album. Okay, so you're gonna have one inch piece on either end. All right, so next, now that you have that, we're gonna go ahead and start to assemble it. You can use any kind of adhesive you like. I'm going to be using an adhesive that I pretty much only use when I make books, which is the Lineco PH Neutral PVA glue. Um, the reason why I like to use this glue is because um, it's a book binding glue. So, you know, 
if the professionals <laughs> use it, I'm definitely going to use it. Um, so you want to leave that one inch border or not border, but end piece, right? So you want to leave that one inch and then you want to start there on the next piece where you're going to create your first little uh, part. So this glue is wonderful for, you know, this type of project because the glue is remains flexible once it's dry. And this piece is going to get moved back and forth as you are, you know, flipping through the album. So this is why I prefer to use this glue. However, this glue <laughs> isn't perfect um, because it's very, very um, liquidy. And as you can see, I am using these little um, clips from Dollar Tree just to hold it down so it can, um, you know, go ahead and adhere. But this glue is really, really thin. Um, I prefer my glue to be a little bit more viscous, but that's really, really like the down <laughs> side of it. Um, it's not as viscous as I like it. It's very, very watery. And also, although it dries clear, um, it dries it dries like glossy clear, you know, so it's not like a matte finish. So it does show up, you know, in that kind of, you know, glossy situation. So I like to spread it with my finger just to make sure I also get very, a very thin layer. This glue is definitely one where a little goes a long way. You don't need a whole lot of glue. So if you can, if you saw, I only put one little string of glue and only on one side of that fold. Okay, so what I'm creating here is those little tabs where my photos are gonna get adhered to. Okay, so one side is gonna be where you have those little tabs. So as you see here, and the other side is going to be basically um, the back of the album that's going to attach uh, or that's that's just the back of the mechanism I should say I don't want it to be confusing so there's my first one there's my second one so here's my my third one so I'm going to see where it's at I'm going to go ahead and adhere these this piece together so this is like a valley right so I'm putting a little bit of glue I'm spreading it with my fingers just to make sure that it's, um, you know, just a very thin layer of glue. I don't want a whole bunch of it seeping out. So as you can see, a little goes a long way. So I'm going to go ahead and um, take my fingers, kind of press it in there so that uh, it adheres together. So on the other side is where I have my little tab, right? So. This is going to be all flat so i am just burnishing in those little tabs so so far we have three right so one two three and then we're going to continue like that so you're going to do go ahead and continue that all the way down so find your next little part put glue on it and then continue just the same all the way across all right, so I did that with both of my pieces. And here you will see how this is gonna attach to the covers of the album. So that one inch piece is gonna uh, fit on along the edge, just like so. And then if you just have one piece and you attach the cover on top, but if you have two like I do, then you first need to attach those two um, to create one singular mechanism in the middle. And so I will show you how to do that next all right so you're going to take one of your pieces and then you're going to take and cut off half an inch so right where that fold is or that score mark you're going to just cut that off this is going to attach to the piece what you want to make sure is that you have all the little tabs together uh, or both of them are matching up right so you have all the little tabs for both pieces you're going to take that bottom or i should say that very edge of the of the one that you cut and you're going to match it up with the other side of the other piece and lay it on top just like this okay so this is going to create one uniform mechanism and then you're also and, and the reason why i do it this way is that so you don't have this 
really thick section right in the middle so by eliminating at least that little piece then you're kind of making all of the tabs the same kind of thickness you're going to create one more little tab from those two that we've joined and then this will attach like so okay so now you have one cohesive little piece there now we're going to take this piece you're going to cut it down to four inches then I'm going to go ahead and match up the ends. So I'm just going to trim off along the bottom like in so that it matches what the top looks like. This is going to cover up that, uh, you know, basically that um, mechanism part. So it just looks a little bit neater, um, more put together. So see, you can see how um, those little flaps and all the little tabs um, are very flexible. So you want to keep that flexibility okay so you're going to take this piece now the die does create score marks for you but they don't work for our project so instead i made some score marks to create that three quarter inch wide space that's going to cover up the back of our album like this and so that makes it just a little bit better the dimensions of our album okay so next i added a quarter inch strip of um, tape or along the middle and then I'm using wet adhesive on the side flaps okay so that's the score tape there and then I'm just kind of deciding which I want on the outside and this is the cleaner one so I'm going to add that but oops I forgot to remove the liner paper on my score tape there we go so now we can go ahead and add it and so you'll see the finished product um, in the finished project it just looks a lot cleaner um, from the outside so go ahead and make sure that is burnished really really well let it dry and everything and you want to make sure that those little um, center pieces those little tabs all move very fluid so I like to take and make sure that they haven't got stuck together by accident or anything so I go through and kind of move each and every single one and make sure that they can move easily right so they're not encumbered by anything so that's what that piece looks like there and so now we're ready to attach it to our cover page so the cover and the back cover as well so what you want to do so here you can see how it's going to look right so this is basically once we do this our book you know part is is done our album is pretty much done and we just need to decorate all right so let's go ahead and attach it together so I'm going to use uh, my wet adhesive again. So I'm going to add it to that one inch end piece. And then I'm going to carefully line it up with my cover. So you want to make sure that this is on the left side of the book. So you want to be able to open it like a book. Okay, so I'm going to press down with my bone folder just like so making sure everything is lined up and me and moving anything um, if I need to arrange it all right so then I'm going to go ahead and add glue to that end tab and then I'm going to attach it to the back cover okay so I'm going to go ahead and make sure everything lines up where uh, it lines up with the edge of that spine and then that it also lines up with the other side with the other cover and make any adjustments as needed so here you can see like when you put in this back piece how the cover or how the spine just looks way more finished the when than when you don't and you'll see in my other example how when I didn't do that, I mean, it still looks all right, but it, this just looks way more finished, more professional looking. All right, so that's pretty much the book. So now the fun part. So we are going to decorate our little luggage. All right, so I um, have cut out two shadow layers so that it is finished on both sides. And I'm just gluing them together, making sure they line up. I'm only going to need the top part, really. So I just want to make sure that lines up. 
Okay, so then I'm going to attach the detail layer and I decided to do them out of the same paper so that it looks kind of like the Keta leather. So if you know what the Keta, the Keta leather is, it's this beautiful leather that kind of um, tans over time with exposure to light and the oils in your skin. So I just love how beautiful that leather is. And so that kind of, that's the look I was going for because you know, this is like high-end luggage here. <laughs> so I'm going to put it on there so you, so I can see kind of where I need to um, put it. And you know, I can cut off any of this excess that is just gonna create bulk inside my book. So there is this, the luggage strap there. Okay, so now I'm gonna work on the wheel. So I cut the bottom part of that same uh, handle, and this is just the bottom part. So I'm adhering um, two of them together. So I'm gonna have a total of four because these are gonna create the wheels. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, glue them together. And then I'm going to attach like the wheel wheel part. So I cut just the bottoms and this is out of Anna's um, matte cardstock. I forgot matte, or is it kind of, it's kind of glossy. Anyway, it's her beautiful black glossy cardstock. And so um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just using my paperweight to hold that down. I know most people use um, some, you know, the clear blocks, but I'm a little type A. I don't like my clear blocks getting all like gunky with glue. So uh, the paperweight works wonderfully and I don't have to worry about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that to all of the wheels. So adhering um, that little wheel section or the detail wheel part to the fronts and to the backs. Okay, so I'll do that for all four of the wheel parts. Okay, so now I'm gonna attach that handle part. So I'm kind of seeing how far down I need to place it. So once I kind of get an idea where it is, and I'm just gonna go ahead and adhere those that bottom part and then close. And of course, this is something that I'm gonna keep checking, you know, opening and closing just to make sure it's in the right place. And I'm not worried about any glue or whatever getting onto the paper because it's gonna get covered up. So otherwise I would have cleaned it up, but it's not really something to worry about. And then here I'm just cutting down, trimming down those wheels. And so I'm trying to figure out where they would look best because I'm gonna put, this is the uh, liner paper that I'm using. And so as you can see, it's gonna cover up all that. So I can, it don't have to, you don't have to be like super perfect and neat because it's gonna get covered up. So I'm attaching the wheels and I, as you can see, I'm just putting glue on the top part because just the very bottoms of those wheels are gonna show. And how much you want it to show is up to you. I just wanted it to show a little bit. So I'm just adhering them and moving them just to make sure they're uh, where I want them. And once they are, then I'm gonna go ahead and press down on them um, so it can be secured onto the paper. All right, so there it is. And so now I'm gonna take that uh, pattern paper and this is a concha paper. So it came from the Crafty crafty Chica um, paper that I got, oh my gosh, I don't know, maybe last year. Um, and it's all these wonderful like patterns, like Latin American, Mexican patterns. And so of course this album is going to um, go actually for my classroom. So I don't know if you remember, I don't know, if, <laughs> but last year I made um, an album using one of Anna's album making dies and I made an album of my trip to uh, Mexico, right? To the Yucatan, to Quintana Roo. So um, this one I'm making for my classroom. And so my students love to see travel little, you know, albums. And so I am creating this one to keep in my classroom. So that's why I'm doing this thematic paper. All right, so I'm doing the same thing with the wheels on the front. And so I am going to attach it. So every, all the wheels line up, the front wheels line up with the back wheels. And so I'm gonna go ahead and attach the concha paper. That's conchas, by the way, just in case that's what these breads are called because they're like clamshells looking. All right, so I'm gonna 
make sure that it is lined up and making any adjustments, making sure. And then once it is on there, right where I want it, then I'm gonna go ahead and burnish it with my bone folder. And there's a little tiny bit sticking out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and carefully trim that off with my scissors. As you can see, it's like a teeny, teensy, tiny tad, but we want everything to look neat as possible. And so I'll just trim that little tiny bit off. All right, so we are good to go. We have the inside panels um, in there. And so you can see how it hides the mechanism as well. So now we're gonna decorate the outside. So I cut a panel out of that same, with using the same dye with the same color paper. And then I run it through my embossing folder. And this is one of Tim Holtz folders. And I will have all of the like materials that I used. I'll show you what I used where a little bit later in the video um, if you're interested. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach it here. So you can use, this is where you could use the layer that comes in um, Anna's kit, but I decided I wanted to do a little bit more of like a travel like luggage set. So I had these embossing folders and I thought I would take the opportunity to use them. So this is like a compass rose. This is another one of Tim's folders. I'm just kind of deciding how do I want it to look. So I'm going to go ahead and attach it. And when you use like embossing folders like this on the covers, it just gives it such a neat feel for the person, you know, who's um, looking at the album. You know, the texture that it gives, I love. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure everything is aligned to the back so there i have my back um, covers my front covers my back covers all good so this is the structure for the album and everything looks great so now to decorate the front i cut out these um, these are little borders these are anna's as well so i'm like threading this strip through that little buckle and my idea was to create like a certain designer uh, luggage set and initials are LV, um, you, you may know. So um, that's why I chose these colors um, because it's kind of their signature color of this brown and, and like tan. So I am taking inspiration from what their luggage looks like. And I totally forgot that they only have these um, like leather parts on just the top part of the luggage and not in the bottom part of the luggage. I totally forgot, but I added them on and it was too late. So, oh well. <laughs> so it's just inspired by now. Um, and so I did cut another circle and then added four more on the back later on. And so now I'm going to go ahead and attach uh, these, uh, I don't know what they're, just this decorative part on the front. Um, of the album so I'm going to trim off any of the excess that stands out and by the way it was just a nice quinky dinky that these uh, were able to fit through these buckle dies so they fit perfectly but these are from Spellbinders these little buckle dies so they just happen to work beautifully with Anna's little border dies so I love it when things work together even though they might not have been intended to. Okay, so I'm kind of just figuring out where I want those little strips, and so I'm gonna go ahead and attach them with some glue. I'm gonna trim off the excess, and then this will be the decorative element for the front. I did leave the buckles kind of unglued, so those do move up and down depending on, you know, where you want them. So there's that. Okay, so this is what we have so far. So I think it came out so super cute. All right, so now to attach pictures. So for your pictures, this little album fits four by five inch um, photos. So you can kind of adhere them however you want to in your book. Um, you're just going to add your adhesive to um, that edge. 
So, and then attach your picture. Since I'm not sure which, well, I still have to print out the pictures that I want. These are just extra pictures that I had from my other album. So just to give you an idea. So you're gonna put the adhesive, you're gonna attach it to that little strip, little photo strip. And then you're going to go to basically the other side. So the back. Okay, so where you see that brown strip is where you're going to attach your next photo. Now for this photo, you want to put glue or yeah, you want to attach the whole thing together so that when you flip it, the, you know, the front and back picture will both flip together. So it'll create like one sheet and then you'll just continue like that. So you'll put your next picture and then you build just the same way. Now you don't have to put the pictures back to back. I just like doing that to maximize how many pictures will fit in the book. You can do one picture per uh, little, you know, uh, strip and you know, however you want it's your book, you can do whatever you want to with it. Now, one last detail I did, once you have all of them in, I took my corner rounder and on the quarter inch side, I went ahead and did rounded the corners of all the photos so that um, they would match the edge of the luggage. So when you die cut them, you get like these rounded edges. And so um, I wanted it to kind of match. So here you'll see how they're kind of rounded. And so they'll just go together nicely. Okay, so let me give you a rundown of the materials that I used. So for the front cover, I used this folder from Tim Holtz and it's called Air Mail. And I think it came as a set of two. So that's where the back one is from. So the back one is compass set. And so those are kind of my travel ones. <laughs> and so I use those two. Now for those little strips on the front, I used um, Anna Griffin's 3D holiday border dies. I think that's what they're called. Now these are all like holiday themes. So they have different like snowflakes and uh, tr Christmas trees, but these have little bows and they're so subtle. So you can't even tell. Nobody would know this was like a Christmas. Set. And I got them on a clearance for like 10 bucks and they're so worth it. I have the original set as well. So anyway, I digress. So the buckles are from this set from Spellbinders. So this is an old set. I don't even have the name of it, but they're buckles, different types of buckles. And then, um, so yeah, so that was it. And then everything else came from Anna's uh, luxury purse set. So let me give you a walk through the finished, finished album. So here you can see how the spine I left unfinished. And to me, it's okay. It looks like that expandable luggage because mine looks like that. And then I just decorated the front with some stickers. And then, um, yeah, so just really simple. This is my trip that I took last month in June for my birthday. So I just, again, I just decorated the front and the back with some stickers just to keep it simple. And then um, here is a look. So on the front, I just uh, printed a map of Spain. And then uh, I started my like kind of first page of churros because, you know, I always have to start with food for me. And then this is the layout for each one. So I have three pictures of the first or, you know, for one city and then some facts about it. So then three pictures of a city and then some facts about it. And so that is pretty much the, the way I decided to do this. Now, this little luggage set is also going to my classroom. So it's a little bit more informational than like personal, but I am gonna put some personal thoughts of my trip on that very back page. All right, so here are the albums again. And now let me go ahead and give you a quick look at the materials I use for my Spain album. So again, just a quick walkthrough. So I just decorated um, the front with uh, some stickers and I had, and then the little buckle at the top. I actually used the other uh, purse die. So I use kind of the buckle that came out of the handle of this set. So you can see there. So I just use that for that one right there. And then the way that the album is set up, as I mentioned, is I did a printout of, of Map of Spain and I use decorative paper for all kind of like my information pages. And I found the Spain paper 
on Amazon and it is so fabulous. It's Spain scrapbook paper. Okay. Like madness. <laughs> and so it is beautiful. It is eight and a half by 11 size and it's kind of glossy, but look at how neat it is. And they had like other countries, like they had a Germany scrapbook album, scrapbook paper album in like France. So I was so over the moon to find Spain. And so I used that to decorate this little album. And then on the inside and the outside covers, just to kind of hide that, uh, you know, tab, I used another one of Anna's um, 3D um I think it's called Celebration Border Dies. These are fabulous. They are so, so detailed. So here you can see on that information page for the cities that I highlighted, um, I have a little suitcase there in gold cardstock. And so this is a hero art set. I think it's called Luggage Fancy Dies. Yeah, Luggage Fancy Dies. And I will, of course, leave all the information in the description box for all the materials that I've used. And so I use that for all the little information pages, um, just to, you know, give them a little detail there. But here is uh, this book. And I created this tutorial for the brown one so you can kind of you know make one for yourself and i think i like all the you know additions that i made to the brown book so i hope you've really enjoyed taking a look at this i had so much fun creating thinking up of how to make this little album and i love how they came out and i can't wait to fill my mexico memories for my classroom Thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. I always appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.